take our first story. It all began out there on Auckland's magnificent Waitemata Harbour just over a year ago. Video cameras were following the action in an offshore powerboat race. It was arch rivals Fleet Lease and Sleepyhead battling it out at more than 150 kilometres per hour. That was until tragedy struck. It was a relatively calm day on the Waitemata. Graham Horn's Fleet Lease and Peter Turner in Sleepyhead were, as usual, vying for the lead. In the busy harbour, a ferry had just crossed the race path with no idea of the devastation it would leave in its wake. It was Peter Turner who hit the deep hole of the wake first. So the first thing you know when you hit it is you're actually going down into a hole which then has a wall of water behind it. And I hit it first, we shot up in the air and landed heavily. We hit the, the next two waves and I looked out the back to see how the other two boats had handled the wave. And of course at that time, Graham was already into it and uh, was going through a spiral motion upside down and pancaked on its, on its back into the water. I was horrified. He would basically hit, hit, hit the same angle as I did. Um, so I just suspected he would um, come back down as we did. But unfortunately, as he hit the next wave, it catapulted the boat over onto its back in mid-flight. Those sort of things are forever in your mind. And uh, I'd probably never forget seeing his boat um, do what it did. Fleet Lease had been travelling at 150 kilometres an hour with three men on board. Now they were underwater, but the two leading boats each had a rescue helicopter following, ready for any emergency. You have to go with every race and think something's going to happen, and our, our, our part of the job, you have to be prepared for something every time you, you fly. The rescue services were prepared, and that would ultimately save owner Graham Horn's life. At this point, driver Ricky Ford has made it to the surface, but amongst the debris of the shattered boat, the Fleetley's rescue helicopter cannot see him. As the boat sinks further into the sea, diver Willie Heatley jumps into the water. You have to be prepared for it, but you never want it to happen. I couldn't see anyone out of the boat, so I um, swim straight to the boat and run down the rail. It's got a rail that runs down the centre of the boat into the cockpit area, and that sort of leads you right down to where you need to be. When people are underwater, seconds of vital and minutes and eternity. You're trained to do it, you practice a lot. Um, you haven't really got time to think about what you're doing here. Yeah, if you're thinking what's next, you're probably not going fast enough. Fleet Lease's Perspex windshield had shattered. The impact had blown Graham Horn's helmet off. He'd taken the force of the boat and the water in his head. He was unconscious and had already been underwater and without oxygen for more than a minute. Inside the boat, the rescue diver battles leaking fuel and murky conditions. Tony Banks was just coming out of the boat pretty much on his own, so I sort of gave him a push and he was on his way. And that cockpit was empty. Swam over the other side and Graham was still on the boat. The fear for Willie is that the boat will continue to sink and come to rest upside down on the bottom, putting an end to any hope of rescue. As a support boat picks up navigator Tony Banks, the rescue diver surfaces with the unconscious Graham Horn in his arms. It is now a fight to get Graham breathing again, using mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. But efforts are hampered by choppy waters splashing into the mouth of the desperately injured patient. Less than two minutes after the accident, the Powerboat Association's chopper arrives. Paramedic Chris Deacon joins the rescue attempt. My initial impression was of disbelief because Fleet Lease is such a good rough water boat and the conditions were actually quite moderate to calm but uh, on circling the scene uh, we could see Willie Heatley in the in the water giving mouth to mouth to Graham and uh, you yeah, know so we really knew something was on then. We're very lucky that the pilot we've got uh, Glenn from Marine Helicopters is, is absolutely excellent and you know I knew I was going to have to jump and, and Glenn just set it up just you know, great and you can see on the video that when I enter the water you know, we're only a few strokes away from where Willie and Graham were. Using pre-rehearsed hand signals Chris Deacon gestures for a rescue basket to be dropped from the helicopter. Graham's head injuries are so severe that time is running out. He needs to get back to shore. The basket is attached to the static line and Chris accompanies the patient on the dash for land. In the flight from North Head back to Mechanics Bay, he cardiac arrested. It's probably, I don't know how long the flight is, but it seemed like an awfully long time. It was like a lifetime. And half of that lifetime across, I'd say, Graham arrested fully. 
I was uh, sort of with gestures of pointing, you know, waving to Glenn, the pilot, to sort of put the foot down. He's going as quickly as he as he could. And unfortunately, on a static line, you can't get up to them to give CPR and mouth to mouth. Uh, I could uh, I could get to him with just one hand and try and flick some of the vomit out of his out of his mouth so he wouldn't aspirate it. When you're just hanging there watching someone you know sort of pass away in front of your eyes, so as to speak, it's it's a pretty harrowing experience. Graham Horne nearly died doing what he loved. Everything that Willie Heatley and Chris Deacon had trained for, the systems that they'd set up, had worked. They and their chopper pilots saved Graham Horne's life. Definitely, the, the reason he's alive today is uh, the rescue teams above him. If uh, rescue teams had to come from five minutes away, I'd hate to think of the consequences. Graham Horne has no memory of the race that nearly cost him his life. He spent two months in hospital and his rehabilitation is ongoing. However, he's now quit the sport he loved so much and his two boats are now up for sale.